I tend to find there's two things that make people have that make people's life harder, so to speak. And that is that they're trying to do too much or they don't have enough support. So before I go through the ways to um, make your life easier, I want to talk about the problems. Hi, and welcome to the Practice Builders podcast with me, Rosie Piercy. I'm a chiropractor, clinic director and practice builder. In every episode, I'm going to bring you the hints, tips and lessons I've learned in building my successful clinic to help you build the practice of your dreams. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Practice Builders podcast. So, how would you like your clinic life to be easier? How would you like it to be less stressful, less overwhelming, feel like you had more time to do fun things and perhaps feeling less alone and more supported? Does that sound good? I think it sounds good because who doesn't want to feel supported and less alone and have more time? Everyone wants that kind of thing. So. I'm going to talk about how you can make your life easier by having more of those things. Because when I talk to clinic owners, um, as you know, in my coaching programs or, or, you know, just chatting away to people I meet, I tend to find there's two things that make people have, that make people's life harder, so to speak. And that is that they're trying to do too much or they don't have enough support. So before I go through the ways to um, make your life easier, I want to talk about the problems that that these each of these problems. So the first one is doing too much. So often as clinic owners, particularly if we've come through a track of being someone's associate, then being a lone practitioner, or having and then having a clinic, or we've gone from being a a, you know associate to straight into having our own clinic, is often we're very constrained by by money. Um, because you know it's, it can cost a significant amount of money to get a clinic off the ground. So we tend to do everything ourselves. And that's fine to start with. But as your clinic gets more successful, the tendency is that we keep that um, doing everything ourselves. And then we're trying to do far, far, far too much. And I think that that leads to a lot of stress because we're not only seeing patients making decisions about how the clinic's going, we're also... Um, ordering stuff for the clinic and I don't know work you know cleaning the toilets and just doing everything that we possibly can for the clinic we're not letting anyone else help us and that can lead to a massive amount of overwhelm and then it's also easy if you're spinning that many plates to let one of them drop and then you feel bad because you haven't managed to achieve everything because you're not a super person you're just you know normal human so I think that's the first thing and the second thing is sometimes it can be very easy if you're, you know, the clinic owner, clinic director, however you see yourself, to feel a bit alone and a bit unsupported at the top. Even if you have an amazing, you know, partner or friends and family around you, sometimes it can be difficult to, to, to have someone who gets what you're going through and what decisions you have to make and the impact of things. And I think that can be quite hard to deal with, particularly if you're having to make big decisions as to not knowing what to do and how to, who to turn to and how to make the decision and that's a that's a very different problem than having too much to do and but and you can have both of these you can have too much to do and also feel alone and not have the support to to make these decisions and i think both of those together can can then be can make then make life quite hard and quite stressful and not enjoyable quite frankly and that's when we tend to feel a bit overwhelmed and burnt out and fed up with having a clinic because this wasn't what we thought we would the life we would get from having a clinic. So what I want to do today is to go to through three ways, three steps that you can you can um, use to make your life easier and sort of solve some of these problems of doing too much and feeling a bit alone at the top. Um, they're not always they're often simple but they're not always easy to do. So you know generally for any change to happen things may feel a bit harder at first or you have to decide to make the change there's a little bit of friction there you know like when you give patients exercise programs or new habits to try and they say oh it's really hard at first but then I I did it and it got better and that's the same with this you know if you're not happy with how things are right now then you need to make that change and it might be difficult so as you're going through this if you feel your brain going I can't do that that's normal we just need to work the way around that so the first thing we want to tackle is the, the doing too much. And we want to tackle that by
by delegating and outsourcing. Now, you may have heard in previous episodes of the podcast um, me talking about outsourcing and delegating. I'll put those links in the show notes if you haven't listened to those before. Delegating and outsourcing are your best friends for making life a little bit easier for you um, so that you're not overwhelmed and doing too much. So to differentiate them, delegating is getting someone in your own business to do stuff for you. And outsourcing is paying someone outside of your business to do stuff for you. How do we do this? So delegating. So I delegate a lot to my clinic manager. I have an amazing clinic manager called Sharon who does a lot of things for me. Um, And so therefore I don't have to think about them. They're off my plate. As soon as I've had a conversation about stuff or we've set it up in an asana task, something that Sharon does regularly, then I don't have to think about it or do it because I know it will be done. If you're starting to um, delegate stuff out, you may want to have a check-in process to make sure the things are being done or being done how you want to. And I had that with Sharon when, I, when we first started working together, but we've been working together for many years now and it's, it just works. You know, I, I just know that she gets stuff done. Um, and she gets a lot done but things that I delegate so I don't order anything in the clinic for the clinic I mean I may order gloves and clonel wipes because I use them I see they're low and I order them on my Amazon app and it takes about two seconds but I could probably outsource that to Sharon but there's a danger I'd forget to mention it and I would be the weak link in the chain and I'd run out of gloves so I order those things but I don't order anything else for clinic on a regular basis um, you know, everything else Sharon orders. Um, we've set up an Amazon account, so she just orders most of it through there. Um, so that works quite well. Obviously, you might need to have some boundaries over how much is spent in a month for things like that and what it's spent on so that, you know, your whoever's doing your ordering doesn't get excited by something and order a ton of things and then go, oh, we didn't need all that. But all that kind of stuff is, is delegated out. Um, I've also now made it for a while now that Sharon is the first point of contact for all the therapists in the clinic. If they've got questions to go to Sharon first, my door is always open, but generally they'll go to Sharon first for something because she can deal with 95, 99% of the queries that, pay, that the therapists have. And they will, she'll probably deal with them quicker than I will because sometimes I'm in clinic and not, you know, not contactable. So that's a good way to start outsourcing is working out Um, who can do things for you and I'll talk about more how you work that out in a moment and then the second thing to do is to think about outsourcing so that means that if you don't want to do things and there's no one in your clinic who has the expertise to outsource to pay someone else to do it and I was talking to somebody on one of my um, sort of free 30 minute calls which you can book if you want about um, marketing and, and they were having too much to do and they didn't know what to do and so we were brainstorming some marketing ideas and they just said I don't want to do this. It's like, well, don't do it then, we outsource it. And then that solves that problem. Yes, it's gonna cost some money to outsource things, but you can go probably go and earn that money much quicker seeing patients than you can from from trying to do it yourself and spending hours trying to trying to make this thing work that you don't have the expertise, you don't have a passion for, you don't understand, you don't want to be doing it, and yet you spend hours doing it. That's a waste of your time you know, the better thing to do is to go, do I want to do this thing? Do I like doing this thing? No, then outsource it. So for instance, my my website is a good example of this. For for up till now, I've built my own websites. I have three um, for Rosie Piercy, Total Cairo and Total Health. And I've only just started to outsource them to other companies now to do for me because although I can build my website, I'm not probably going to do it as well, as efficiently and as seamlessly as a person who makes websites will, because that's their area of expertise, whereas it's more of a a hobby in inverted commas for me. And also I just don't have the time anymore. I don't have the hours to sit there doing it. And also I don't have the capacity to cope with something goes wrong to fix it because I just don't have time. So I've taken it off my plate and I've outsourced it. And that feels very good. It's nice having things done for you because then you don't have to do them. It's a joy. Um, I've spoken before that my lease is just about finished being renegotiated and I entirely outsource the renegotiating of my lease to somebody else because I'm rubbish at negotiating. I know I am. Um, And I think that's knowing your strengths as well, knowing what you're good at. If you know you're good at something, do it. If you don't know, if you know you're not good at something, 
don't do it. Get somebody else to do it for you. And it's much less stressful. So it's turned something that could have been, you know, renegotiating my lease, getting my lease renewed, that could have been incredibly stressful. And I've just outsourced it to someone else and almost forgotten about it because I trust them to get it done. So that's the joy of delegating and, and outsourcing is that it um, gives you less to do and it makes you less stressed because you're not thinking about it as long as you use the right people, obviously. Right, that's the first step. So what I want you to do, maybe pause me now and make a list of all the things you think you could delegate to somebody else in your clinic and then make a second list of all the things that you think you could perhaps outsource that you don't want to do. I mean, tax and payroll and that's another thing that I just outsource completely. So pause me now, set yourself like a timer of 60 seconds and just write down everything you can quickly think of. Don't let your brain stop you. Don't let your brain go, oh, but we can't do that. No, no buts, no ifs, no limits on this. Just outsource it all, whatever you can. Hi, just interrupting the show to ask you a quick question. Do you ever feel overwhelmed by all the things you think you need to do to build a busy, successful clinic? What if I told you there's only three things you need to do to build the practice of your dreams? I call them the free essentials and I've created a workbook that you can download for free to help you work your way through them. Links in the show notes, so get your hands on a copy today. Now back to the show. Perfect. And you're back with me. So what we're going to talk about now is step two, which is about organising time and boundaries. So it's really important to make sure your time is well structured. This can sound dull. Because you're like, but what about spontaneity? What about this? What about that? Well, if you think, if you're in clinic, you have set times that you're in clinic. That's not spontaneous, is it? That's just when you're in clinic. So I think you need to have time to do the admin side of running your clinic. Now, you may outsource a lot of it or delegate a lot of it, but you still need time to do the things that only you can do in clinic. And you need to know when they're being done. So ideally, you'd have a schedule of when things are happening. So if you need to have time to review paperwork, time to have meetings with your practice manager, um, time to update, I don't know, your treatment notes or whatever things that you want to change, you need to set aside time for doing that. Now I'll put a link to the um, Make the Most of Your Time booklet um, in the show notes and that will talk to you about how to a little bit about how to organise your time and how to help you delegate and outsource, which was the last point we talked about. So that'd be a good thing for you to download if you don't have a copy already. Um, what I, what we, how I tend to run things in clinic is that we have a meeting every three months where we decide what we'd want to get done in clinic and what's going to happen. And then we set time aside or set goals for each bit. And then I work out when in my diary I'm going to do it. Because if I just have, say, update patient area on my website for instance as a to-do list it's never going to get done what you have to say is 10 o'clock wednesday morning for 40 minutes update this and that's how it happens or if you know that you need to phone somebody you need to schedule it in as an appointment if you just have it floating around in ether it tends not to happen and also to break up big tasks so if you've got a big task coming up you need to break it down into steps so the first thing might be schedule time to break down the big idea that you have into steps and that might take you half an hour and that's all you for work you're going to do on it and then the next thing might be schedule the time to do each of those steps and that's the only thing you're going to do on it and then the third time you do it is step one So that may sound like you spend some time not doing anything, but having a dedicated plan and map about when you're going to do stuff means that it will get done. Otherwise, it's just a blob in, 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 you know, a blob that's floating around in ether that you're sometime going to catch and do and you'll never do it because our brains don't work like that. It gets pushed to the side. So that's how you organise your time is to set that time out of clinic. Now, that may mean taking half an hour here or an hour there out of clinic time to do this or to set aside some time one evening or one morning maybe you get up a bit earlier and you do the stuff that you need to get done now that may sound painful but you will feel much better for doing it and getting that stuff done than you will for having it sitting like in the back of your head going you haven't done this you haven't done this and we all know how horrible it is to have that feeling going on so that's a good way of of doing that and then the second part of this is boundaries is 
being able to say no to people and to be to guard that your time that you have so again this is in the make the most of your time workbook that we that I spoke about a moment ago but it's some people find it very hard to say no no I don't want to do that no I'm not going to do this and that means that we stop doing the things we want to do for the things that someone else wants us to do and that's fine if it's something we want to do but not if it's something we don't want to do and it's getting away with the things we do want to do so learning how to say no is really important and it's ways of saying no in that booklet and also to have cut off times where people don't speak to you anymore now that sounds really mean but I have in the past been too available for people so they've messaged me at half past nine at night about a clinic thing and I've responded and you have to learn that that you have to have some off time. You have to have some time when you're not the clinic director, when you're not doing things, you're just in family time or alone time or whatever time you want. So I often just turn my phone off when I've had enough. You know, at a certain time of night, my phone goes to aeroplane mode and I'm not contactable. Um, or I just don't respond. I stop checking my emails at a certain time and say, right, I've finished work now. You know, whatever's happening, I don't want to know. So it's important that you do that and sometimes you need to have a conversation with people and it can be a difficult conversation of you need to stop messaging me after this time or you just ignore the message and respond the next day or the times that you want to and eventually people will learn it's probably better to say um, I noticed you messaged me late at night that's fine but just so you know I'm not going to respond until the next working at day or please don't message me in the evening because I'm not at work then and I'm not going to respond to you, whichever you feel more comfortable with. But setting that that boundaries will give you some sanity because otherwise you never switch off and that's not healthy for us. Good. And then the final one, so the first two points that I have have tackled a little bit for, for doing too much problem that a lot of clinic owners have. And now we're going to talk about the the feeling alone. And this, I think, sometimes is a slightly bigger problem. So the answer to that is to get support. But I think it's important you get the right support. I know I've spoken to many clinic owners in in coaching sessions, and they talk about um, needing a sounding board, wanting someone they can just discuss ideas with. And they found they've tried to do that with their partner, their friends, their family. But often their partner, friends or family don't understand the situation of a clinic or what's going on. Or they have a a worry for the person. So they may not want you to take a bold step in your business because it might fail and be bad. Or it might take time and then you won't be as home as much. Or they don't understand the skills that you have and, and the abilities that you have to do what you want to do. Because they have they see you in a different light. So that that can sometimes mean that you don't get the best advice from friends and family, however well-meaning their advice is. Um, And sometimes they can you can just feel a bit that you're trying to make all these decisions on your own and you don't know what the right way is. Or sometimes you do know what the right way is, but you want someone else to say, yeah, I, I agree with you. It's 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 hard. So how do you find that support? Well, you can um, you can find other clinic owners. Maybe not your competing clinic owners, but other clinic owners or friends and colleagues who have clinics and talk to them because that's a good way of going through things that they've experienced, similar things, I would imagine. So you can have a chat to those. Someone who's in a similar kind of field to you or has a similar sized clinic or has perhaps made the jump that you're going to do. So if you're about to go from being an associate to owning a clinic and your friend did that two years ago, then maybe have a chat to them you know, see what they did, see how they did it. Um, You can listen to things like the podcasts that I've done um, or join my practice builders community. Um, I've spoken a lot about um, how I've made the transition and and how that's been for me, the the lows and the highs of of that. And the other thing, of course, is you you can pay someone, you can outsource the need for support to somebody like myself or the other coaches in the business who can give you a completely unbiased view of what's going on. Now, I'm not a, a particular coach. I mean, I haven't trained to coach, but what I find is that I've had a lot of experience in this industry in setting up clinics um, and running clinics. And I think I've come across almost every problem that you can have. And so 
I'm quite good at solving problems or giving you the opportunity to solve problems. And most of the people I talk to, they know what they want to do and what they don't want to do. They just need a little bit of accountability to get it done. And they need someone to say, yeah, I think this is a good idea or no, I think that's a bad idea or that is a good idea, but these are the things you need to be wary of. And that's why having someone who works in the business, it can really help you um, not feel alone and feel supported and help you make a change. Now, I had a coach when I opened Total Health. Her name's Gemma from Prosperity Kitchen, and she's amazing. And I'm ashamed to say that at the time, I felt very self-conscious about having a coach. I didn't want to tell people that I had a coach because I was like, why would I need someone to help me set up my business, you know? But in reality, I was single-handedly opening a six-room multidisciplinary clinic and not only opening the clinic, but although the physical building was there, it was a big empty space. I built the walls of the clinic. Well, not single-handedly, obviously, but I organised for that to be done. It was a huge financial undertaking. It was a huge logistic undertaking whilst having a small fa- small children and running my clinic in someone else's clinic at the same time. So I think sometimes we can underestimate what we are doing and the value of having someone who's completely unbiased who hasn't got any other preconceived ideas about what who we are and what we're doing to say yeah right you're doing this let's this is how we do it and who's got some experience you know Gemma has a lot of experience in 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 business and so she gave me ideas that I never would have thought about my clinic certainly wouldn't look like it does without her input And she held me accountable to get things done because often when you're doing a big project or if you've had a clinic for years and it's got too much, you're suddenly like, oh, I don't want to do this. It's too hard or I'm tired or I'm going to put it off. But putting it off doesn't help you. And knowing that you've got a coaching session coming up that you haven't done your work for um, or that you need to do things for is quite a good motivator. So I can say hand on heart that my clinic wouldn't be the clinic I have now without Gemma's support. And I know that, you know, being able to give people that support is really super important. Um, So whatever kind of support you go for, if you're if you feel that you're not sure what to do, you're constantly spinning your wheels, not getting anywhere, feeling like things that can change, but you don't know how to change them. Or you just just want someone to give you a little bit of help along the way, then either speak to someone who's done it before uh, in a kind of friend capacity or speak to a coach. There's me, there's other people in the, in, in the industry, but get someone who knows what they're talking about to help you. If you want to work with me, I've got two ways. I've got individual programs, coaching programs, and I've got a group coaching program that's starting at the end of the month. I'll put links for both of those in the show notes. But it's important to know that you don't have to feel alone. And of course, you can post in the Practice Builders community um, if you wish to, um, and I can see what support I can offer you from there. So... Hopefully now you'll have had some ideas about ways that you can make your life easier and that you'd have already paused me halfway through this or maybe at the end of the episode to work out instantly what you can delegate and outsource because that will help you no end. I've put the links to all the things I'm going to mention in the show notes and um, I will be back in a couple of weeks for the next episode of the Practice Builders podcast. So I hope you have a lovely rest of the day. Bye-bye. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you'd like more hints and tips, then why not join my Facebook group, The Practice Builders Community. The link's in the show notes. I look forward to seeing you there.